Hey, 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 welcome back to part two uh, YouTube and all the cloud scholars out there. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to publish sensitivity labels. We're going to walk a little bit through how we can prioritize uh, different labels. If you're going to move things around. Plus, I will show you exactly how they will pop up for your users so that they can apply these labels to their documents to keep the data secure. So hopefully you're in a new Microsoft purview. Uh, just go to purview.microsoft.com. Uh, once you get there, um, you come down here to information protection. Now we're in information protection. We go into our policies, actually, excuse me, our sensitivity labels, All right? So um, there are different ways to publish a label, right? Um, but you know, um, I'm gonna show you a couple of different things that you can do. So we have a couple of options here before we go into the publishing. So if I click over here, right i can move this up or down in priority right or you can move it to the top the lowest priority the bottom the highest priority uh we can assign a priority to it we can delete a label and obviously we have an option here for publishing a label and then we also have to create auto label and policy and so on and so forth now if you were to come over here to policies and you would go to publishing policies right you would see some of the policies that we have that are already published and you would also be able to publish a label over here as well so i'm going to come back over here i'm just going to do a click on publish labels and it says choose sensitivity labels to publish now to prove my point i'm going to come back here publish policies and i'm going to click publish labels and it does the same screen so now over here, it shows all these other um, policies here that we can publish. So this is the one that we created, which is top flight security of the world, Craig. So we're gonna click on this one and we're gonna click add, and then I'm gonna click on next. So you have assigned admin units. Choose the admin units you'd like to assign to this policy. Admin units are created in Microsoft Entre ID and restrict the policy to a specific set of users or groups. So um, it says E5 license required to configure admin units. We're not worried about admin units. We're gonna go straight and work with users and groups, right? So admin units is a way that you can utilize in your organization if you wanted to, you know, basically carve out your environment to certain people to have certain rights, right? So you would have certain admins. So you're not gonna give help desk access to everything, obviously or you may have some system admins that will only supposed to have responsibilities in this area. So admin units are a great feature. So just so you all know that. So over here we have users and groups. So we can modify the users and groups that we want to give access to, right? So I can click on edit and I can do specific users and groups. So for instance, if I wanted to do a sensitivity label and I wanted to kind of make sure that certain groups would have certain labels provided to them because we are dealing with some type of acquisition, right? Or we are going to market and we have a new product and we're like, hey, we need to make sure that this information does not go out because our competitors will use this and they will re-engineer it, the idea in their environment and then go to market. So we need to make sure it's safe. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply this to our marketing group. Include users and groups. All right, so we have our marketing group. So just an FYI um, for our marketing group, uh, if you try to do a security group, it will not show up here. It has to be all for 365 group in order for it to work. I uh, was testing this and making sure it worked before I did the video and it didn't work with a security group. So that's just a quick FYI so that this way uh, you don't run into the same problem. So now that we have our group, I'm gonna click next. Um, and then here we have a different setting. So we have configure settings for this label to include in this policy. Users must provide a justification for removing a label or lower its classification. That's great. Require users to apply a label to their emails and documents. We don't have to, but we can if we wanted to. Uh, require users to apply a label to their Fabric and Power BI content or provide users with a link to a custom help page, All right? So we'll just leave it the way it is um, right now. And then right here, we have uh, apply default label to documents. So there's default labels that you can apply to a document. You could do top flight security. Um, if you wanted to, it really depends um, on your organization. Um, so let's say for instance, you have a group that is working on an acquisition. Um, as I mentioned before, you might create a group for that. And then this way, all your documents associated with those individuals, you can make sure that it's highly confidential because they're probably sending some stuff to make sure that they acquire the company because that is going to increase revenue. So you don't want things to get leaked. So over here, um, we say uh, apply a default label to emails, right? So you, it's the same thing. And you could do that as well. 
Um, but we'll leave that as an option for them. You can apply a default label to meetings and calendar invites, events. And then, you know, you have Fabric and Power BI. So we're gonna have to go through this whole thing and then we have to name your policy, right? So this is top flight security policy. And then we come down here, next. And then we click finish. and then policy is created. So it does take some time. I clicked out that screen uh, really quickly, so I apologize, but it does take some time for that policy to get published, right? So what I'll do in the meantime, I'll show you exactly how some of these sensitivity labels uh, look within your environment. So I opened up a real quick Word document so you all can see it, right? So you'll have this option. Um, it'll show a little bit different on the uh, desktop app. Right now I'm in the web view, but you can see here it has sensitivity and down here, you'll see different ones. So this is a test one that I had originally. This is highly confidential. This is confidential, generic, public, and personal. So um, as I said to you before, it does take some time. It could take an hour, two, three hours uh, for that sensitivity label to um, show up for your users. So, um, but you got the gist of it, right? So this is just pretty much how you go about creating a sensitivity label. Uh, so this video, uh, I wanted to keep it a little bit shorter than the last one. It was a bit lengthy because I wanted to go through all that theory and get an understanding, a foundational understanding about sensitivity labels, but they are very powerful. You have a lot of different options. It would be impossible for me to show all of them because every organization is different. And then plus you may have different situations that you need to tailor to, but Microsoft provides you a plethora of options for you to choose from. So please uh, put anything down in the uh, comment section. Let me know exactly what you thought of the video or if you're using sensitivity labels and you're running into a problem. I get people asking me questions all the time and I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. So I hope the information I provided you in this video uh, was uh, helpful, which I believe it was. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. It definitely helps me out with getting my content out to more um, people out there on in the YouTube land. And if you uh, want, you could definitely send me a message on LinkedIn and connect. I'm always looking to explore to uh, grow my network. So thank you again. Um, here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.